Rain gear. Now I live in Oregon, so staying dry is an art form. It's a full-time job. You learn how to navigate, right? You're basically hiding a lot of the time, trying to stay out of the rain. But eventually, you're gonna have to move. And if it's pouring rain, oh well. Starting off with the top, I run a US military Gore-Tex parka. You definitely need to test them in the rain. So what I'll do is I'll put a chair out, put a dry towel on it, put the jacket over it, zip it up, pull the hood down, wait for the rain to come, and then afterwards inspect it, remove the jacket, check that towel, see if there's leaks. If there are, what I recommend, what I do is I use this flex seal and I'll come back to all the seams and I'll just pour this stuff on there. For my bottoms, in heavy rain, I'll use the same US military issue Gore-Tex pants. They have a, about a three foot long zipper up the side that enables me to get them over my clothing that I'm wearing. Unless I'm on a training exercise where everybody's gotta be in M81 tops and bottoms, you know, normally I'm running around and I'm wearing just a civilian bottom, okay? Because I wanna be able to blend in quickly if I have to move into an urban environment. So I'll use a pant like this. Okay, this is just a snowboard pant. Check Goodwills, I've found tons of high quality ones there. So to keep with that mindset of being able to blend in easily in an urban environment, I run pants like this. This is a Helicon Tex. It's a water resistant nylon, great pants. In wet environments, I'm always gonna be running gaiters. You strap this over your boot. It goes up about two feet up your leg and this helps keep all that moisture out of your boots and off the bottom. Excellent tool. Grab yourself a pair of gaiters. This is my wind lair. This is just a shell by Frogtog. It's ultra light. The material is basically cotton infused with rubber. It's also a neutral color. So that way I can drop this M81 if I'm heading into an urban environment, throw this on, and I look just like everybody else. Your rain poncho is probably one of the most important pieces of kit. Now I bring the rain poncho with me, summer, fall, winter, it's always on me. What I do is I come back and attach these pieces of paracord these are about a body length, so probably about six feet. I have one of these pieces of paracord on every corner. That enables me to get it up real quick if I need to use it as shelter. Obviously, it's used to go over your body and cover yourself, keep you out of the rain. You've got your pack on. Well, this goes up over your pack also. Now, I carry two ponchos on me. This is a U.S. military poncho. Been using these for years. Love them. My second poncho is a much heavier, I think it's almost two ounces heavier than the US military, but you could literally drop down in a puddle with this thing. I believe this is Polish, I got it on surplus. Great poncho, so I have two, okay? So basically I have one for myself, my body, one for my shelter, and I have another that I would use to cover my gear, okay? So my Alice pack, boom, I can set that up, keep it dry. You gotta remember that no matter what you do, you're always gonna get wet. It's just about getting less wet, basically. Scotchgard is a great product. You can spray this on everything. It'll help bead up that water, help it run off. Good product. If you know me, you know that I hate stuff sacks. But when it comes to my rain gear, the top and the bottom, I do use the stuff sack because if this is soaking wet and I introduce this into my bag where there's a lot of dry gear, I'm gonna corrupt all that. So I'll take it put it in this stuff sack. I'll either put this inside my bag or I'll leave this hanging out on the back. Now you can leave this hanging out on the back also, but what I've found with moving around in the forest and winds and such, this can easily expose itself to the elements and now your rain gear that's supposed to keep you dry is wet, defeating its purpose. Then you got big problems. Doing everything you can to keep yourself and your gear dry is crucial, okay? If you get wet, well, you add the rain, the cold, and the wind, you're heading into a bad situation, right? Hypothermia. The body is in constant survival mode, always, 24-7. All it's trying to do is keep its body core temperature high enough to keep you alive. The human body is made up of 60% water, okay? But it doesn't mean that we're fish. There's nothing really to learn. All of us know that if it's raining, we hide. We don't want to get wet. It's just human nature. So... Using your tools effectively can help you to stay less wet. Footwear. 
For me, it really comes down to three things. The first being the weight of the boot. The second being whether or not it is waterproof or breathable. And the third being the most important, the comfort level. First up, I've got a boot here by Solomon. It's got a leather exterior. Now this boot is waterproof. It has a Gore-Tex liner, which is basically like a big balloon. I call them foot condoms. Okay, so you can submerge this and you're gonna stay dry. But at the same time, while you're rucking around, your foot is sweating. And that sweat has nowhere to escape to. So you kind of end up in a little swamp inside of your boot. This pair of boots weighs in at about three pounds. Now for years, I wore the military surplus boots. They weighed double that. So weight for me on my boot is a big thing. I like super lightweight. Next up, I've got these Basques. Now it's obviously not really a boot, it's a shoe, but I love this thing. It's super lightweight. So the pair weighs in at about two pounds. And this is a very famous shoe because this shoe was worn by the soldiers that killed Osama bin Laden. It's called the Juxt by Basque. It is not Gore-Tex. Okay, it's got leather on the outside, but it's breathable. So it's that whole debate between having a waterproof boot that lets you submerge it and stay dry versus a breathable that's going to get you wet, but it can dry out a lot quicker because it's breathable. These are both very expensive, okay? I think these are about $200. These are about $180. I got both these at Goodwill, paid five bucks a piece for them. Wool socks. If you know me, you know that I'm a huge advocate of wool socks. For example, it's dumping rain right now. Even if these get completely soaked, they're still gonna retain about 80% of your body's heat. Gators, these are game changers, okay? If you're operating in a wet environment like Oregon, gators make a huge difference. They keep your boots dry, definitely pick up a pair of gators. These are US military issue mucklucks. Now, if you're gonna be operating in the snow, it's a whole different world. And these things are incredible. Now, if you buy these, know that they come with a booty that goes inside. It's usually a wool, big giant wool sock. Without it, they don't do anything. Pick yourself up a pair of mucklucks if you're gonna be in the snow. Foot health. Your feet are everything. Without your feet, you got nothing. So you've gotta keep them healthy. I use foot powder, talcum powder. I'll use band-aids for blisters, moleskin, incredible stuff. Flip-flops. These are rubber flip-flops from Birkenstock. Love these things. They're ultra light. I think it weighs like two ounces. My favorite thing about the flip-flop is getting done with a long day, trudging around in your boots. Your feet are wet. They're hurting. Get back to base camp. Get those boots off you. Throw on these flip-flops with a nice pair of dry wool socks. Heaven. So for me, it's about the weight of the boot, whether or not it's waterproof, and its comfort level. Right? What's more important than comfort? At the end of the day, it really comes down to this. Without healthy feet, you're basically f Keep your feet dry, keep them healthy, keep trucking. The sleep system. When it comes to sleep systems, there's a saying, okay? You want something to sleep under, something to sleep in, and something to sleep on. Believe it or not, everything you see here on this table is part of my sleep system. Now, there's nothing more important than a good night's sleep. You may be thinking that it's all about your sleeping bag and its rating. It's really not. There's a lot more that goes into it. I'm going to break down this system, show you how I use it and why. Something to sleep under. I run a U.S. military poncho. On each corner, I've attached a six foot long lanyard of paracord. That enables me to get it set up real quick. Something to sleep in. Now you'd think that we'd start with the sleeping bags, but we're not. Because it all begins with your clothing, what you've got on you. Here I've got a polypropylene top and a polypropylene bottom. These are extremely warm. Wool socks. I hate having cold feet, so wool socks are everything to me. I carry three pairs of wool socks on me at all times. This is 100% wool, military issue balaclava. It's also got a wind liner sewn into it. This will keep you nice and toasty. Wool mittens. These are military issue. You can pick these up for about five bucks at any military surplus store. Sleeping bags. I run the MSS, military sleep system. Now you're gonna hear a lot about it because it's heavy, okay? It comes with the patrol bag, the intermediate bag, and the Gore-Tex bivy. You put it all together, it's coming in around nine pounds. That's a lot of weight. Starts off here with the patrol bag. Now this bag is rated to about 40 degrees. Next up, we've got the intermediate bag. This bag is rated to, I believe, negative 10. Now, when you put it all together, okay, you put the intermediate inside of the patrol, and then you put that inside of the bivy, 
It's supposed to go down, rated, to negative 30. But to me, those ratings are very questionable, okay? Do I think that if I got in butt naked inside of the patrol, intermediate, and the bivy, and it was negative 30 degrees, and I'm naked, that I'm gonna be warm? I doubt it. That's where all the layers that we just talked about come into play. You can pick up these military sleep systems for around $200, but be careful, some of them are 500 bucks and they're fake. So you wanna make sure that it's genuine, okay? 10-year industries, that's what you're looking for. Also learn how to read the contract number. If you go online, you can look up how to read military contract numbers, find out when it was made. When you're looking to purchase one of these, it can be a little confusing, okay? Because you'll see it listed as four parts. Well, what they're talking about is the intermediate bag, the patrol bag, the Gore-Tex bivy, and the stuff sack that comes with it. You know me, you know that I hate stuff sacks, but this one's extremely well made. It's very robust. You could easily pack everything up here, clip it onto the outside of your Alice pack, you'd be good to go. The Gore-Tex bivy that comes with the military sleep system is legendary. This thing is awesome. You can drop this in a puddle, you'll be dry. I carry a Wubi on me, so I can definitely plus up my insulation. All my woobies, I come back and I sew a zipper in here to the middle of the woobie. That enables me to wear it as a garment. I can put it over myself and put it underneath my rain poncho. Something to sleep on. You may think that it's just a thermores, okay? Well, what if that ground's all wet? You gotta put something down, some sort of a barrier between you and that wet ground. This is a real heavy duty space blanket. I think they're called grabbers. Had this for years. You can see I've got a million spark holes in it that I've just repaired with Gorilla Tape. Yeah, obviously double as medical, right? Because it's a space blanket, so you can turn this thermal on yourself. I carry contractor's bags. This is a three mil. That's about the minimum that you want. Lay this down, you've got a good vapor barrier between you and the cold ground. I carry two military ponchos. If I needed to, I could use one of them as ground cover. I run Thermarest. I believe this is the ridge line. I've been using these for years and years and years. They're ultra light and they're bulletproof because you can't pop them, right? You use air mattresses, good luck. You'll notice on this one, you can see that I've cut it. If you can see that angle, well, I've cut that angle in because that works with the military sleep system down at the bottom. If you leave it just square, you'll have issues with it bunching up. When it's three in the morning and negative 10 degrees, you're wrapped up warm in your military sleep system. Well, you gotta pee. It's no fun getting out of that bag. So what I recommend is grabbing a Nalgene, a wide mouth. You can use this as your little porta potty. I always keep a headlamp on me while I'm in my bag. That way if I need to get up, I've got light. I run water systems using Sawyer water filters. Now, when it's real cold, you've got to make sure that these don't freeze up. So you want to keep them close to your body. It's a perfect time when you're sleeping. Put this in a plastic bag so it doesn't leak on you. Throw that in there, good to go. I use dry bags to keep all of my important things dry. Most importantly, my sleep system clothing. So I'll put those into my little dry bag, along with my socks, my hats, my gloves. There we go. I know that I'm safe and sound. Keeping this sleep system dry is probably the single most important thing you can do. I run the Sea line waterproofing bags. I simply stuff the entire sleep system in here Push out all the air, seal it up. That's a rundown of my sleep system. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of gear, okay? But it's worth it. It's a lot of weight too. We know that the MSS sleep system's coming in around nine pounds. You add up all this other stuff, we're probably looking at 12 pounds worth of gear. So it's a lot of weight, I know. Another thing I know for sure is that if you don't get a good night's sleep, things are gonna start going downhill real quick. I guarantee it. The Alice Pack. In my opinion, the best bag ever made for any military type operation. On the front here, we've got this lid. Pull that back and it exposes the front. Here we've got three pockets. Now a word of caution on these pockets. There is an opening at the bottom of each one of these top three. So if you put small things in here, they're gonna come right out the bottom. On the front, we've got another three pockets. We've got a large and two mediums. Inside, it's a simple bucket style, which is what I love. You've just got one main compartment. On the back here, you've got a pocket. I believe that was for the radio system or maybe it's for claymores. 
super simple. On top of this lid, when they originally were made, this would have been a rubber. This upper lid separates, small opening here with Velcro, and I keep my maps and lightweight things up on top. On the back of the bag, you see we've got this beautiful frame, our shoulder straps, our lumbar support, or our little, you know, hip pad. You come here and get the right kind of straps, you're gonna find that they have this quick release. And when you employ this, basically the bag falls right off your body. You simply pull these tabs here and you can adjust your shoulder straps. Now the frame is a story all to itself. What it does, it's not just a frame for the bag. It's actually built to carry ammo cans, claymores, radios down here in this bottom box, you would be able to stack those up. So you'd remove the physical bag and use it to carry things around. On my setup, I run two canteens. These are actually World War II canteen carriers here. I run one on the left, one on the right to balance out the weight. Inside, I've just got a military issue standard canteen. These are called sustainment pouches. So this gives me a lot more room to put stuff in. You'll see when I load it up, how much more I can get in. On the bottom, I've added these two straps and that holds my sleep system. So this is my thermo rest, this is what I run. Now all these straps can be attached. They've got sewn on little loops all across the bag. So it makes it real easy to attach things. Just like here on the sides, I'm able to weave through those and attach my canteens, my sustainment pouches and such. On the top here, I've got a paracord handle that I've created. I have a video on how to make them. It's super easy. Once you get the pattern down, you can make them. But I definitely recommend adding a handle to your Alice pack. It makes moving it around and maintaining it a lot smoother. Here you can see one of the straps I was talking about. Okay. It basically is like seatbelt material. And you've got these sewn on on the sides, on the bottoms. And these are the Alice clips. So you can attach older style equipment using these clips. The material is a real heavy nylon. And the story I was told is that they deployed the World War II stuff, okay, but it was all made out of cotton. Basically, you know, heavy canvas type stuff. And when it hit the Pacific Theater, World War II, the stuff started rotting out, getting waterlogged. So by the time they got to the Vietnam era, they had switched everything over to this beautiful, tough nylon. I've modified my bag. It came with its original clips. Well, what happened is those clips were worn out and they were biting into my gear, actually damaging it. So I went ahead and sewed in new buckles. I didn't want to do it, but the truth is it's made my life a lot easier. Here you can see the lumbar pad, or I call it the hip pad, and it does come with a buckle. So you could strap this around your waist. I like to have the bag off my body, right? I want to be able to get out of it as soon as possible. I don't want to be strapped in by a big giant buckle. So I hide this behind the frame on the back of the Alice pack. I think since it's such a legendary bag, that's what's led to the aftermarket parts for it. Okay, so you can get new modern straps that are much thicker, much more comfortable. You can get a new lumbar support that's a lot thicker. Again, you saw me change out the buckles. There's a lot of things you can do to make this more modern. As I said before, this is my favorite bag of all time, but it's extremely heavy. So just the bag and the frame, if you get it factory fresh, you're looking at about nine pounds. That's a lot of weight. For me, the trade-off's worth it because of the frame. It allows you to load the bag up and this frame and the way the bag's constructed enables the weight to be distributed extremely efficiently, making it possible to carry a lot more weight comfortably. This is a 1983 Alice pack. You can find them used. I know that a lot of companies make new versions of them. I like the vintage stuff. I picked this one up at a Goodwill for 10 bucks. So I got extremely lucky. My dream is to find somebody making the Alice pack out of Dyneema. Okay, with a carbon fiber frame. So the whole thing comes in at three pounds. But even though it's heavy, I think the trade-off with the way it carries the weight and what you can do with it 
is well worth it.